Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. I think there was a seed because nobody paid him any attention because he, he 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 was not given information that pertained to them well let me just say this it probably was a seed planted but like you like the bible teaches about the seed planting uh it might have been on, on on rocky ground where only a few seeds sprung up or whatever whatever but anyway yeah. the bible teaches that a brother offended is almost impossible to be one and so i don't know if any of you guys because y'all military background if you ever worked in sales you know you first start talking to a person and the first thing you do is disagree with what they say, you're not gonna sell them anything because yeah. now they've already put up a defense. If I just lean on you, the normal tendency is for you to lean back toward me so that I don't push you over. So right. if I'm trying to get you to come my way, the first thing I don't need to do is push against you. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you in sales that when a person comes up, the first thing you do is agree with them and then put a spin on it. On. So I'm not saying agree to the point that you're in heresy, but at least you have to get to the point where there's open dialogue and we have an opportunity to talk. Or have you considered, well, let's take a look at this then. And you have to be open to hear what they have to say as well as being yeah. able to be open to dear. Because most people talk to people as if they're on a soapbox. Most conversations, one person is almost, if you listen to the conversation, is standing behind a podium and the other person is sitting down. One person is being dictated to and one person is receiving. That's not dialogue, gentlemen. No, it's That's not. not a conversation. That's not we a have to be open to hear, yeah. but then we have to also understand what we know enough because the Holy Spirit is a true teacher of the church. They have to want to look at it and look at it, come to their own conclusion. Mm -hmm. A man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still, said uh, Socrates. So we have to understand something. And that's if we want to reach people, there's a tech, there's technique to it. And I, I like the brother said, I'm not discounting the Holy Spirit. And when he speaks to you and tells you something, you do what he says to say what he wants yeah. you to say, because yeah. he knows what's been prepared or what he's already prepared that person to receive. So I'm not discounting that. Right. But barring not getting a revelation knowledge from the Spirit of God, we have to be we just have to be sociable to the point that we yes. understand how to have a conversation with people Amen. about Amen. things that they do not agree with. The question becomes, when you preach the kingdom, what, what's offensive about the kingdom? If I'm preaching the kingdom of God, where in did I offend someone? You, you see what I'm saying? If I'm preaching the kingdom of God, what element of that is should be offensive? Well, I can tell you, because most people hear about the kingdom of God think that their whole life has to change that there is no joy, there's no fun. That's what they're taught. Let me, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me, let me clarify some things because I think you're missing a lot of things there. Let, let me just kind of off the bat make this clear. Ain't nobody reaching nobody. Woo! Holy Spirit. We, we, we need to understand that all we are are vessels and instruments. Mm. If the reaching being done, it's not being done by us. Okay. That's the first thing. So that's ground rule. You need to understand that when you engage anybody, you gotta have a solid, clear trust that the Spirit of God is going to use you Ooh. and you don't have to say the right words. See, we get all been out of shape about you don't even have to say the right words. The Spirit of God can take some jacked up stuff and mm -hmm. read some. Oh yeah. Now here's, here's the way it works. You are supposed to only be engaging the people that you are being maneuvered to in the first place. Come on, okay. And I know in the past we used to go knock on doors. <laughs> that's all well and good, that's that's good good idea. But Romans is clear that they that are led by the Spirit of God, Woo! they are the sons of God. Come on. Jesus said, it is prophesied about Jesus, I think, in Isaiah, that said, morning by morning, he waited my ear that I might speak a right word to the people that he gave. So what we, what we have to do is that, first of all, we have to be walking in trusting faith in order to do this work of the kingdom. Nothing matters to God if it's not done in faith. Yes, sir. And God's expecting you in terms of this kingdom mission 
to have a solid, unshakable trust that what you are doing is not you doing it, but it's God that worketh in you. Woo. Now, you need you don't discount. John the Baptist preached fire and brimstone. Yes, sir. John the Baptist wasn't trying to engage you on your level. John the Baptist telling you that one coming, if you don't believe him, you're going to hell. <laughs> hey, man, man. John the Baptist was throwing bricks and yep. folks were coming out by the road because John was anointed by the Spirit of God to preach this thing. And that, there are people out there who can hear that kind of gospel. That gentleman was talking about earlier. See, the Spirit of God knows who needs what at what time. Okay, okay, okay. There are some people who need to be squarely hit in the mouth. Oh. They don't need no love for stuff. They need to be bust in the mouth with the gospel. Cause God done brought him to the place. God said, I got him to the place, bust him in the mouth. Bust him right in the mouth and he'll break down. But you don't know that. You don't know that. So you've got to be walking in trust and faith. And what you have to have done is develop your relationship with God in such a way that you are discerning. Yeah. You're listening to the Spirit of God, discerning who you're dealing with, and then the Spirit of God can then, listen, if, if you if you work your relationship right, you can be just as comfortable and at ease, and the Spirit of God is going to use you to witness to people. The other point is, not everybody that you witness to is going to respond. Apollo water it. Everybody has a role in this thing. If you think about when you got saved, you had a ton of folk who were spoken into your life. Come on now, come on. All kinds of people were sent to you, mm. telling you about God. And what you don't realize is, God has the capacity to do this accumulative effect on you. Then all of a sudden when your mama come, it is the it is the accumulation of all the stuff you've heard in the past Woo. that you ready for that moment. Yes, sir. So what's it, what it all comes down to, is that we have got to learn how to walk by faith to walk in the spirit so that when we're witness to the people, we are open and sensitive and trust in the God. So, okay, now, all right, what we got here? You, you got to have an ongoing conversation so you can discern. So it ain't up to you to kind of choose what, what to give to that person. It's up to you to be in the place where you can hear them and be led to what to give that person. Come on, I like that, yes sir. But there's, a, there's all kinds of folks out there. There's some folks out there you can you can have a conversation with. Yeah. There's other folks out there who you can get into a, a debate or an argument. But there's some folks out there you can bust in the mouth. Yes, sir. There's some folks you can look square in the eye and say, if you don't change, you're going to hell. Yeah. If, if God had dealt with them. Come on now. So it, it, there's not there's no fixed yeah. for this thing. It all comes back to this one verse. The just shall live by faith. Come on. Woo! <laughs> and, and I think that's what I'm trying to say is that with Jesus' example, he did say, remember I just said, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like. Yes, know, like and two. And like and two. You see what I'm saying? He gave it. And, and, and use this for example. I'm breaking the script up. And um, Brother Asa, can you read this for me? Um, I think it, it gives an example of Jesus encountering somebody. And you, you're all familiar with this one. This is the uh, the woman of Samaria. Uh, read read those, those verses, about in verse one. Okay. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs to go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of grounds that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, took us on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For the disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How does that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? 
for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that said to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living one? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Yes. Which gave us this well, gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle. You ready me go out? Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to look up a little bit. Right there. Okay. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Yes, sir. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Yes, sir. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water uh -huh. that I thirst not, Come neither cometh hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come here. Uh -huh. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, and, and that saith thou true. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. I wonder why. I will worship in this, in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. I'm coming up for a little bit. I'm to talk to uh, up, 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 right there. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain well, nor yet at Jerusalem worship well, the Father. Uh -huh. Ye worship ye, ye, ye worship ye know not what. Right. Okay. We know what we worship, Whoa. for what? salvation Woo. is of the Jews. Yes, sir. <laughs> but the hour cometh, and now is, Woo. the true worshippers shall worship the Father in yes, spirit uh -huh. and in truth, uh -huh. for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yes, sir. God is a spirit, uh -huh. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Let me say something about this conversation yesterday. It's in line with what we've been talking about. You see, our underlying truth about the gospel of the kingdom being preached yes, is that the gospel is for a certain kind of person. Mm, go ahead, go ahead. <coughs> gospel is for lost people. Woo. What Jesus is doing in this text is bringing a woman from a place where she thinks she's not lost. Wow, wow. She is absolutely she is lost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you see, he's got to get her lost first. Come on. Uh -huh. I know you're Samaritan. You got a history of religion in this mountain. I know you do all of this stuff. But you're yes, as lost as you can be. And I'm going to show you by your own living that you're lost. Woo. I'm going to work this conversation down to a way where I'm going to get you to testify to your own loss. Go so get your husband. So, so what we have to understand in, 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 in presenting the gospel, we got to understand that we're dealing with lost people. Yes, sir. He perverted, blinded, all kinds of lost people. But the one thing that puts them all in the same boat as we were is that they're lost. Yes. And what we got to do is cause that lostness to get the Spirit of God used. What the Spirit of God is trying to do is he's trying to get them to see they're lost. Because nobody who is lost, nobody wants to be lost. Everybody wants to know where they are. Come on. Come on. Uh, 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 uh. And if you get you to see that you on a road headed to eternal damnation and destruction, woo, not in the right mind, so they're going to keep going. Uh-huh. If they're not been there. Hey. So in that case, I want to make sure Jesus is very strategically being used to lead this person who has knowledge about God, knowledge about the intricacies of, of religion, but really lost in terms of having a relationship with God. Yeah. At least in that place, 
to a place where she knows you're going to tell him or not. Whoa. Come on. Come on. And, and, and isn't that what I'm talking about? We're going to preach something. And I like you said, preach lost people. Yes. Yeah. That's that's even something over here called Conversation Revolution. Yeah. 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 If you're searching for an identity, that means you lost who you are. Which it has been intentional. Right? Until Jesus comes to see the whole world is lost. Walking in darkness. Walking in darkness. And we don't know. And that's what you're going to preach. You're the light of the world. Let me take this paper off. You got, I mean, that, you see, brother, as I'm saying? He going to go preach to people. He said, we're the light. We're the light. And what we're doing, we're, being, we're actually the representative You know, there, uh, there is um, uh, the one quality of light is that it never changes the speed. Frame reference doesn't really matter. It's always going to be the same speed, regardless of where you're meeting it, running alongside it or whatever. It's going to leave. So the one thing about us, and I think it turned to what Yancey was just saying, our gospel doesn't change in accordance with our environment. The gospel is going to remain the same. The language might change because we want to be able to communicate to the people that we're talking to. But the gospel is always going to be the same. The gospel is the kingdom of God. That's what we're preaching. And then when we're, when we're doing that, from my perspective, I'm really trying to hold my skills on this. It's that I am imploring you, I am compelling you to accept Jesus Christ as Lord in your life. Back off the mic. Back off the mic. I, I, what would happen is that I, I, back off the mic. I won't be able to just uh, you still back. You good. No, I, I, in, in, in propagating the gospel, I'm compelling a person to accept the Lord Jesus as the Jesus Christ as Lord in their life. Regardless of what the circumstance situation is, that's still my conversation to them. Uh, we preach the social gospel. We preach the get you out of fire gospel, the rescue gospel, but that's not the gospel. Uh, the, the gospel is not that God comes to rescue you out of a situation. The gospel is that God comes to be Lord in your life. If you come to a point of acceptance of that, then it will find the ground that it needs to fall on. It may be your hardships or your, your, your the things that are happening bad in your life that turn you toward that. Uh, see that bring you to that realization yes, but sir. the end of the day is i'm compelling you to accept jesus as lord in your life yes, sir. That's, yeah. that's the gospel for me my, and, and the kingdom is submitting to his lordship yes sir but look, look, so, look. so can i say this yes sir oh, yeah. the the when we started we, we were talking about the 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 black jews yes you know and the uh the, uh, yeah, the, the true Israel, Israelites and all that other stuff. The problem is, even in what they're saying, they're still separated from God learning what they're learning. Exactly. And outside of Christ, they're separated from God. So they can be whoever they want to be. But the bottom line is, they need Jesus Christ to get back connected to the Father. Right. Period. Uh, and, and that's why he's trying to say is that if when you could, when I'm saying there's different battlefields that you're going to be fighting, just understand the, the, the battlefield that that may be. You just read that Jesus dealing with a terrain yeah. of Samaritan. And, yeah. and so what this is here was, I mean, you think you're not even lost. So let me, let me make sure, let me bring you into your own discussion of who you are. And now while you're in it, you got issues. Yeah, and that was basically my point. So you can you can say, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, come you on. Know, you 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 you're a true Israelite. Hey. You, know, uh, you you can go through all that history. But let me tell you this. Uh -huh. Outside of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. you are still separated God. from the God that you are serving. Right. Amen. Man. Yeah, and you know, the thing about it is, I like, I was reading this for real quick. I didn't, I didn't think these scriptures are part of helping us in our discussion. Uh, this one right here is uh, Isaiah. It's also found in Luke when Jesus actually went into the synagogue. But the first, uh, I think it's the first one or two, first one or two. 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and that they have been justified by God, to comfort all that mourn. Now, now I don't know why your mic was broken up. Did you want to read more? No, I want to let Brother ask you. Brother ask you read that. I'm not. Yo, your mic is, your mic is. Brother ask you read that. Starting at uh, 61.1. Yeah, one and two. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. And, and don't forget that when Jesus did that, that scripture, he stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord. Yes. Because that, that the vengeance is, is, is dealing with uh, the end time, right? So yes. he, and I'm dealing with the fact that I've been anointed. And, and Christianity means Christ like, meaning anointed like, to preach the gospel or the good tidings. And in that good tidings, you're healing the broken heart. You're proclaiming liberty to the captive. That's probably what people want to understand because they've been spiritually captive, they've been physically captive. Their hearts been broken. Some been broken because of different abuse. There's a, a lot of things that, that, that you've been anointed to preach on, isn't it? But you've been anointed. I think that's the key. To I, I, I saw. <laughs> I, I know. I know this seems kind of. It's. It's. Uh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I try to make adjustments. Can you? Hear me? Yes, sir. There. There is. Um. Uh, in all of those desires that we have, remember when you spoke to the woman at the well, she said, he said, if you drink from this water, you'll never thirst again. Come on, man. Come on, come on. Yeah. All, the, all of her longings, all of her, her desires, all of her longings want to be met in this one man, Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. In him, in him, the fullness of the Godhead, finally, whatever our needs, our desires, our wants are, what system on earth can overwhelm him? Ooh. If God be for you, who can be against you? Yes, sir. So there, there's a, there, there is a, he is the, the liberation. Uh -huh. He is the satisfaction. He is the he is the the the, 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 the fulfillment of our greatest dreams, our, our long our longings. Our, so when I'm preaching this kingdom to them, I'm literally preaching this man. If you have a question, I mean, if they have a question concerning what happened with these people, I mean, the, the response to me now becomes, if God before you, who can be against me? Right. Have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? If you have a a, 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 a savior here, if you have someone who can get people off you. If that's what the need is, so, so I, the, the, it has become so it's exclusive, and I think that's where we're going to get in trouble. Where we are in trouble already. Aside from Christ, you ain't going to get all that. Aside from Christ, you'll never know the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father by Him. You can't know all. You can't have all knowledge without Jesus. You can't have fellowship with the Father without Jesus. And I think that's the exclusive, and that's the reality of it. And that has been the thing that I personally have shrank away from preaching. Because uh -huh. I didn't want to pay people. I didn't want to tell them that, you know, all that stuff you're doing is like a waste of time because you'll never know God aside from Christ. But the reality of it is, I believe in my heart. I'm, I'm fixed now. I'm sealed. That aside from Christ, you just stumbling in the dark. You still, you still lost and trespasses his head. Ain't this fact that the most yeah. in the dark? Well, we're born. I mean, woman, when we're born, we're we're born dead. dead. You know, the, the, the woman came to the well, obviously, to get some water. 